What is genetic testing and do you recommend it to your patients? So over the last, say, decade or so, there's been an increasing body of knowledge about predisposing genetic factors in at least a subset, perhaps 10% of Parkinson patients. Again, often these younger onset patients, things like the Parkin mutation. There's a whole series of mutations mm -hmm. that have been identified. And in select cases, we, especially when patients are interested, we do work with uh, geneticists, sometimes for the purposes of just their basic knowledge. Uh, you know, nowadays a lot of people get their genetics tested sort of on their own and come to us with these questions, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these are risk factors, but not necessarily causes. And so it's important that we sort of explain that to patients, that we're learning about the genetics of it. The vast majority of Parkinson's, at least in terms of our current knowledge of patients in their 50s, 60s, 70s that develop Parkinson's do not have a genetic mutation that has yet been identified. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call sporadic. So for most patients, genetic testing is not a standard part of our uh, clinical practice. Okay, so you mentioned earlier that regardless of uh, whether they're a patient has a specific Parkinson's gene, that it doesn't change as far as we know right now in, um, in terms of standard uh, clinical care their overall management of their symptomatology? By and large, I, I would say that's true. I, I mean, and there may be some exceptions where we know certain mutations may predispose people more to certain complications of certain medications. But generally speaking, our sort of medical armamentarium is useful for those patients every bit as much as for the non-genetic Parkinson patients. They still tend to respond to the medicines, mm -hmm surgery if they need it. So, so by and large, it doesn't really differentiate our management at this point in time. So are patients to assume then that majority, if not all of the mutations so far um, discovered in, in, in Parkinson's is related to uh, dopaminergic neurons and the loss of these dopamine neurons over time? Well, that's a, that's a, it's a way a big question. Um, what the role of some of these genetic mutations are can be fairly complex in terms of what they're affecting, protein transportation mm -hmm. or formation, whether they're involved in sort of creating some of the specific aspects of the pathology or predisposing to them. So uh, yes, most of them end up mm -hmm. having a sort of impact on the dopaminergic system, right. but some of them may be you know, doing other things as well that we're still learning about. Right, and from, you know, and there is uh, evidence out of some of these are related to, um, uh, to changes in the neuronal system and their inability to handle stress in right. the stressed oxidative environment of the brain, and so it makes them more vulnerable to uh, dying off. Right, and, and you know, th these areas in particular, the dopamine producing areas are yeah. very stressed. If That's you right. Will. They're constantly That's right. pumping out dopamine, so yeah. so they are probably vulnerable to uh, any number of of stressors, as it were.